So let's get Siri to set a timer for the trouble spots, which I'm gonna take 10 minutes because too short of a break and my hand won't have had time to rest. And too long of a practice, I'll start forgetting what I was working on. So 10 minutes is a really good sweet spot to work on that. So, hey Siri, set a timer for 10 minutes. Your timer is set for 10 minutes. All right, so let's analyze this, see what's going on here. This part actually feels pretty good. That long extended thing, the big lick that I've been using here at the end. The one thing I noticed is I'm kind of sloppy getting to those transitions. So I'm going to practice that. And a lot of times I'm missing that downstroke. It's up, down, up. But I'm kind of missing the down there. So it's hammer, hammer, up, down, up. And then downstroke on this transition. And the next part. I'm just playing an octave lick, so octave, octave. On the B string, because the way it's tuned, it's one fret higher than what this one would be. That's only two frets apart. Down here, it's three frets apart because the way the B string is tuned in fifths or thirds, I believe it is, one or the other. So one thing I'm doing is kind of utilizing the dots here and the spaces with my eyes to figure out the best places to land. So here, this is an F sharp. So I'm starting on F sharp note. And I know two frets up on that D string is where I need to land for that. And now I'm, I'm landing on the dot here. I'm not even looking at which fret number it is. I just know there's a dot where my pinky is landed. So I'm gonna aim for that where my pinky is on that dot on the B string and play the same shape. And then all I'm gonna do is walk up the, the scale. With the same down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now, by far, the most difficult part was the last three because the shape isn't exactly symmetrical. It's kind of weird. It's set up a little differently. And I know for the longest, I tried to figure out which way was the best fingering. Should it be pinky and ring and then pinky and ring again? Or pinky and ring and then first finger, middle, pinky. That's usually the way I would play that, but because everything's going by so fast, I tend to leave my ring finger there. And that's kind of Paul Gilbert style. He uses his ring finger in that shape. Another way to do it is the first, middle, ring, and then that way you can land on the middle and the pinky there. But that kind of feels forward. I'm not used to playing it that way. I know John Petrucci, I've seen him play it that way, but that's not easy for me. So I just decided to stick with the ring pinky on both of those. And then I got to practice that transition. And that one's kind of tricky because you got first, middle, and then first, ring. And the last one is even tougher. One thing I kept running into is the big stretch here of two frets. And then when I landed here, it's one fret, but my finger was already used to hitting two frets really make that sour note and it would sound terrible. Okay, so then back here, it's kind of a stretch. This one thing threw me off because here it was one fret, here it's two frets. So all that would kind of go in my head and I'd be tripping over myself terribly until I just decided to sit there and work on that and work on that. And the last thing I also noticed, uh, I've got this late listed later on, but I'm gonna go ahead and say it now since we're on this. The pattern is, consecutive notes so so we're moving up the scale that's the way the last one should sound but I was having problems moving this pinky and this ring finger to get to that note so what I ended up doing is changing that solo just slightly to make it work for my fingers because I couldn't train my fingers to do this other way since it's been doing the consecutive notes all the way up until this point, it was kind of hard for my fingers to kind of get out of that. So I had to change that. And now we have, and usually the note would be here. But I wanted to bend that, so I have to go. Okay, so. Before it was. 
And that was hard for me to move these two fingers out of the way to get that first finger there. I would end up usually going like the, the middle finger would move late. It would stay stuck there. So the, the, the way around that was Once again, I'm trying to move in to mute that note so I don't have that G string. That was one of the terrible things, frustrations I also had was the G string kept, kept ringing out whenever I release that bend. And it's hard to mute that with that first finger. There's really no way to do it. So it has to be with this hand. So all these things just, I just keep working on during this time. So how much time we got left? We got about four minutes. So what, what's another trouble spot? This part right here gave me all kinds of grief. Because my fingers end up getting tired. Instead of putting the pinky here, my ring finger would get in the way. Right there, that part would give me all kinds of problems. Now, I, did, I consider going, but I, I couldn't get there in time. I didn't have, I didn't work on this long enough that I felt comfortable doing that. So I just left that as a nice bend. A little staccato. And then I slid up. That way I could do that little slide down there. Into the big lick. One little notch. That lick itself to me wasn't hard, but getting to here, the next part, and switching the pickup switch was the tough part. So I practiced that lick just to get into that part. That was another part. I'm going here and then jumping back over. I felt my, a lot of times my first finger couldn't get there. It wasn't strong enough. And then when I finally got there, I overextended it. So I had to practice that a lot. And also, obviously the last part, engaging that walk. Actually, the wall pedal I had a little bit deeper. So let me change that real quick. I had it all the way to the bottom. Now, I didn't realize that, but that's another example of having everything prepped the way you need to have it ready. To me, that's not deep and throaty enough like the old, you know, John Petrucci style stuff is. So it should sound like this. See how much more girth that WAP setting has? With the 535Q wall pedal that I have from Dunlop, you can change the sound and the depth of the wall pedal. I wanted to make sure that was right as well. So that's the way it should sound. And that was a hard part too. Getting the wall pedal down each time. And I started with this one, but it didn't sound as good as this one. And that slide, I aim for this note with my middle finger. That way I can pull off there. At the end. At first I thought it was the whammy bar here that caused that, but it wasn't. It was the actual vibrato. All that has to be practiced. I wanted to work on that, and that was the trouble spots that I found running into. So for sure, I definitely wanted to work on those areas, especially this huge ascending lick that was inspired by Paul Gilbert, because he tends to do that lick a lot. 